Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nisha Singla and this is the part 2 of use effect hook. In the previous video, we have talked about what is use effect, what is side effect and how to use use effect hook to implement side effects in the functional components and how to use lifecycle methods inside functional components with the help of use effect hook. Now this video is completely dependent on the previous video. So if you haven't covered the previous video yet, I strongly recommend to watch that video first before proceeding with this video. Now let's start with today's session. So in this video, I'm going to show you one practical use case of use effect hook where I will show you how to hit the backend API to pull the data and how use effect hook can be useful over there. And there will be a lot of things that I'm going to explain throughout in this session. So don't skip the video, watch the complete video till the end. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. So in the previous video, we have this users component, right? So I don't need this much of data on my users component. So let's clean it out. I don't want it as well. And in the app.js, let's keep it as it is, okay? Now what I want before use effect, I want to have one state that will help me to display some data on the UI. So as of now, I want to display this user's data, which is an array of object. You can create your own structure. I'll keep it very simple with two props like ID and name. So I want to display this data on UI, right? And maybe later on, I want to update this data. So for that, I'll keep this one in the state. So I can say hit users list and set users and we will use this use state hook with initial state of users array. So if I want to display it on UI, I will keep it again very simple. I will not create any fancy UI for that. I will display it as a list only and I will display only name on UI. And I will also pass key property here. I will use this ID here. So when you see it on the browser, it will display this name here, right? That's what we have mentioned here. Now, instead of this hard-coded users, I want to have this data from the backend. Now, just try to understand, I want to get the data from the backend. So it means I have to make a HTTP call for that. And doing a HTTP call is a part of side effect. As per my previous discussion, the side effect logic should be implemented separately. And for that, we have use effect hook in React, right? So let's implement use effect hook to implement the API call. And to do the API call, I need one REST URL. So I will use a fake API JSON placeholder, which I will use this users route because I have created the structure accordingly, ID and name. It has lots of other keys, but I will use only ID and name as of now. So let's copy this URL and I will use it now in the use effect. So for that, I have to create my use effect hook which will take one parameter as a callback function. And here I have to implement my side effect. That is a HTTP call. There are multiple ways of doing that. I will show you one way. Let's hold this URL in a variable. And to make a HTTP call, we have so many ways. We have fetch method. We have uh, fetch method is built in method. So I don't need any external library. I don't need to install anything. We have exhaust library, very useful, very simple as compared to fetch, but I don't want to install any external library. So I'm not going with exhaust as of now. So let's keep it simple with fetch only. It will take one parameter that is a URL. It will return one promise that you have two parts to JSON. And then it will return you data that you can use on the UI. That is your final result. So as of now, let's console it on the UI just to see, are you getting the correct data or not? You, you can see here, you get the data on the console and the same data, right? That I have shown you here, it's same. Up to here, so far, so good, right? So do you remember, here we have this state in the app component and on click of this button, I'm updating my counter state and user is a child component for the app. It means whenever my state change in the app component, it will re-render the app component and its underlying components as well. So user component will also re-render whenever my app component will re-render. So when I click on this state, it will re-render my component. And of course you will see, you will get your use effect logic is also re-evaluating. The reason for that, if you remember, I mentioned in the last video, like use effect hook by default call for every render. Whenever my user component will render, this logic will also render. So this is very important. Uh, we don't call it like this. You have to decide whether you want to execute this logic 
during first rendering or on a very particular state change. So if you want that uh, it should execute during first rendering, you have to pass a empty array here that is only once during first rendering. So when you save the changes and during first rendering, it will make the API call and display the console. But when I click this button again, you can notice my component is re-rendering, but my use effect logic will not re-evaluate again because I have told my use effect that only execute during first rendering as empty array is a part of initial rendering. Perfect. But now UI also I need to update with this data, right? So here instead of doing console.log, let's use this set users, which will help me to update my users list, which I'm using on my UI. So let's pass this result to this set users. And it will display the new data on my UI. Here you go. Now this is the first thing. Now as I told you in the previous video, you can also pass dependency here. Sometime we want to execute this logic again on a very specific state change. For an example, I have a refresh functionality also on my UI. Whenever I click on this refresh, I want to pull the data again, maybe because something is updated in the backend. So I want to keep it updated. So for that reason, I can also use that refresh state as a dependency in the use effect hook right how we can do that let's have a refresh button you can have a fancy refresh icon also but i'll keep it simple with refresh button and for that i need one state as well let's quickly do that i can say refresh set refresh and i will implement it as a boolean so initially it is false and here i can have a event i can attach a event handler here I will call this set refresh and will just simply toggle the value. So now I can tell my use effect hook that execute the use effect hook again whenever there is a change in the state of my refresh. Okay, if you notice initially it rendered this users also. So let's remove this users. If you not, let me show you again. If you refresh this one, you will notice initially this state is showing, right? Let's remove this one. We don't need it. That I have uh, did just to show you the user's state pass it as an empty array so now notice it will just refresh with your data okay so now just to check this whether refresh is working you can go to the network tab also and when you click on this you will notice there is a user's api when you click on again you can see it is hitting the api every time whenever there is a change in this refresh state but the same will not happen when you click on this counter you can see nothing will happen but for this it will fine because that's what i mentioned that this use effect is going to effect only when there is a change in the refresh or during the first rendering so that's how you use this dependency here in the use effect hook to implement the lifecycle method okay now the another point here is if you want to have an api call on button click okay then of course there is a no need of use effect the way i have on click for refresh state similarly you can have this logic in a separate function and that function you can bind on your button click there you don't need any use effect hook another thing is you can keep it more you can make it more clean you can put your logic in a separate function and then that function you can reuse in this use effect hook now let's create one function that will keep my logic of doing the api call you can keep it in a separate util file maybe your api file i'll put it here only and whatever logic i have here i can put it there as well and I can say return up to here this data I'm returning from here so when I call this function from here it should not impact my UI it will also do the same thing now this function is reusable anywhere else if you do need you can reuse it if it is in a separate file okay so that's how you are going to use use effect hook and its dependency to decide when to update your use effect so I hope the concept of use effect hook is now more clear with this practical implementation and there are lots of other use cases of use effect hook which can be used depending on the project. Okay, it should not be a challenge, but yes, the concept and the logic will remain same. We'll see you in the next video with more interesting hooks. Till then, keep learning.